There's like an old proverb, you never show your sword. You could be doing great things, but you need to have humility. And yeah. if someone says like, hey, this thing's cool, sometimes yeah. the answer is thank you. Benny, what episode is this? Episode 45. Episode 45 of the Real Talk Podcast. It's your host, Joey. And Thomas. And if you like what you're hearing, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. What's going on? Woo! We're doing it, baby. We are doing it. I love this. Yeah. Another pause. Just sitting down, dude. Talking to the best people around. You know, we've been doing it all day today. And we're also training Ben and Mike to take over at BizFest. We are. If you are around in the Somerset area. BizFest would have already happened. At uh, Somerset Patriots. Part, yeah, it would have already happened. <laughs> you missed so, it. So, <laughs> um, in the comments, if you guys saw the wonderful Ben and Mike out there, I'm um, just killing it. Yeah, killing it. let us know how they talk to you guys. Yeah, let us know how they sounded. Please let us make, make sure they made us uh, sound good. Damn, we have quite the, the weekend and week ahead. Yeah, I know, busy weekend, and mm -hmm. then. Well, I mean, by the time this comes out, probably we'll be back from Vegas. Oh, 100%. So, we'll be out in three weeks. So, Recently, we've got a new sponsor. Profile by Standard. Yes, they are sir. a nutrition company based in Bridgewater. If you're trying to get fit, go check out Profile by Standard. Yep, really good, healthy snacks. Um, they offer a, a lot of stuff. I just had a protein bar. It was sick. Did you? Yeah. I had the. I had, uh, one too. I had another bag of the jalapeno. <laughs> I said it in another episode. I had another bag after that. <laughs> ben, so good. What was your favorite flavor? Uh, I had the uh, peanut. One, the peanut butter one. What'd you think? Mm. It was good. That was like really good. No, they they are good, honestly. Like this, like right in the morning. And I, you know, I have a lot of protein bars. Like, look at this. It this one comes with banana cream pie, chocolate brownie, mint chip, mocha latte, salted caramel, chill, strawberry cheesecake, and vanilla cake batter. Woo! These, these are what they look like. You put them in your bottle. You shake them up. And boom, only 100 calories. <laughs> boom. Shake, shake. shake. Hell shake, shake, shake. yeah. But Joe, can you uh can you let us know who we have on today? Today we have Rob Johnston. Ooh. Rob Johnston is a DJ, independent designer, strategist, and photographer. He's worked with the likes of Coldplay and the Lumineers. Everybody welcome Rob Johnston. Dun dun dun. Yo, dun, Ben, dun. I swear to God, you put that shit in. Yeah. Put it in, Ben. <laughs> right now. Here, let me set you up. Sorry. Right. Bye bye. Straight how, me. You're just chilling. <laughs> cool. Right here, baby. So I'm not I'm not uh, sure if you remember how we met. We actually met at a wedding. Really? Yeah, we met at a wedding. You look very familiar. Yeah, we, uh, I forgot which wedding it was, but I remember you came up to me. I had one of the C70s with me, and you were like, oh, yeah, like, what kind of camera is this? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and then we yeah. we chopped it up. Yeah, At the the place like- uh, I think it was the Crystal Plaza, Plaza, maybe, or something. Yes, yeah. the Crystal Plaza. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love you. Just dropped that on me on, on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this sick. is the story of my life, though. This is like meeting random people. Uh, I talk to everybody. My wife is always, my wife is like the complete opposite. She's totally introverted. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, just, yo, let's collab. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So you have, I do remember now. I really genuinely do. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm not, I'm not the same. I'm the same. I'm the same. We meet new people every single day of our lives. And sometimes yeah. like, I, we, we see it in each other. Like someone comes up, like, oh, dude, how's it going? And Joe's like, I know we know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for me, there's only like between the DJing and the podcast and, and everything else, like there's always so much room on the Rolodex. But thankfully, yeah. though, like when people bring it up, like you just brought it up, I remember, like I always yeah. remember like a face. Mm -hmm. But with names, I'm terrible. And that's not good in an industry that's I'm a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, the name industry. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. uh, for like weddings, too, you meet so many different people between guests, oh, vendors, the people that are working at the. Um, yeah. Do you still do weddings and everything like that? Yeah. So this summer has been sort of like the predominantly with the DJ, but I also do photography. I did like a couple of uh, photography shoots, wedding shoots for my friends. Um, but I kind of leave that to the pros and stuff like that. But uh, I do do a lot of like live event photography and stuff. But this summer was loaded up with uh, weddings and I, w I was loving it. I was following like, you know, uh, guys like Nick Spinelli and SCE <laughs> and Jason Janai and all those guys. Shout out to Bando one time. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bando. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jeff Scott, who I see like follows yeah, you guys. Yeah. So I was, I, Early on in the summer, I got really into that on YouTube. Yeah. I was like, this is the year we put everything in the case. This is the year we do a major. And, and I did it. So it's a good feeling. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm almost sort of happy that's over. I'm happy to get back into podcasting. So when you hit me up, it was like divine timing, really. So some good. Get some yeah. practice in. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
So how did you get into what originally made you start podcasting? Okay. So I'll give you, I'm going to kind of, there'll be moments where there's like, this is just my ADHD. There's going to be moments where there's extreme detail. And then we're going to go into like light speed to like something else, but I'll just, you know, I'll cut through the good parts. So, so for the people who don't know out there, can you just fill them in on what the podcast is? Sure. So, uh, I went to Rampo college, which is right here in New Jersey. Yep. And, uh, I went for design, the whole thing kind of happened by, by accident, but um, I felt out of place and I wanted to like work in New York city. And at the time I was really into podcasts. I was super, super early to Joe Rogan. And I'm talking like episode, like 200 early, like way before Spotify. <laughs> yeah, way before yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. So that was like all me and my dumb pothead friends knew. At the time. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I started listening to like design podcasts, like Debbie Millman and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, this is cool. But like, there was a big disconnect between me at Rampo college in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Shout out though. Like they're great and everything, but you know, that, and then kids who went to SVA and did all that. So, yeah. um, I kind of just felt this pressure to get my life together. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to start a podcast. So I, uh, I got a little audio technique, microphone and I created what's called me, the creatives. Mm -hmm. So I did that originally just as like a Trojan horse to meet dope people. And it worked like surprisingly well. I always tell people like when you're just starting out, you actually, cause kids would be like, I can't start a podcast. Like they'll never say yes. It's like, no, if anything, they're going to say yes right now. It's when you get big and you have a platform that they're going to be more like hesitant. Yeah. When you're first starting out, you get a lot of like initial, maybe I just got lucky. I don't know. Yeah. But I started interviewing people from the creative space. Originally, it was designers and um, people and like the New York design, you know, yeah. like a real hoity-toity kind of yeah. thing. But then as time progressed, I kind of was, you know, the ADHD kicked in and I started interviewing people from the film space, uh, people that worked you know, in editing and photography. Um, and at college, I was really into photography. So then I kind of, that kind of came more into the forefront. But I essentially just created Me the Creatives to bridge the gap between people just entering the field and people like myself who are really genuinely, really scared about what the future held. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I go into it and talk to a class and I hit them with that, like, how you guys feel? And at first they'd be like, like, whatever. And I'm like, no, really? Like, are you scared? They're like, no, really very scared. Yeah. And they're like, they're freaked out. Cause <laughs> yeah. like, they're like, I don't really have an, any plan after after this. So I just tried to have a sort of conversation, chopping it up like we're doing now with yeah. people who were leaps and bounds more qualified than me. And uh, it kind of has grown. And it's been like, I've interviewed hundreds of people. I don't even know what the number is, but it's gone from like the design space to photography. And um, the coolest thing now is that a lot of the kids, I've, I've kids, it's ridiculous. I'm saying you're 32, but <laughs> a lot of the um, people that I, spoke to early on in the podcast are now starting to DM me like, Hey, what's good? You don't remember me, but I, you know, yeah. I met you in LA one time at a live podcast and like you put me on and now I work oh, at this sick. thing. Yeah. So it's cool. It's, um, it's something that I feel like it could be much bigger if I were to allocate more time to, but mm -hmm. I got a lot of ADHD and a lot of projects. So <laughs> we're, we're back in it now. It's coming back, <laughs> back in it. Baby. Yeah. Do you remember your first uh, episode? Yes. It was with, uh, Sean Adams, who is the, um, I, I took his classes on, at the time it was lynda.com, which is now LinkedIn Learning. I was kind of like, I've always been really into like technology and how it could be used to better myself. You know what I mean? Like online learning, especially because I feel like there was a lot I didn't learn. So I took these online courses at the time I was still in college and I interviewed Sean Adams and he designed like the Nickelodeon, the OG Nickelodeon splat logo. Oh shit. Classic. Yeah, classic. And like Nick at night yeah. and all that Ooh. stuff. And I'm a big I'm thirty two, so I'm like the you know, that was right. Man, yeah, you know too. about Nick at night? Yeah, dude. You do, right. yeah. Sorry. You look dude. like Cartoon Network looking <laughs> Nick <laughs> and ass. Yeah. But he was mad cool. And he's uh he's now like overseas, like Art Center College, which is like one of the biggest design schools in the United States of America. Yeah. Why did I say the United States of America? I mean, <laughs> more nervous, I'm more nervous than like I am. It's real patriotic. United States of America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the <laughs> Yo, bring, bring like yeah, an eagle yeah. across the screen right now, yeah. man. I want to see a bald eagle across yeah. the screen right now. I know. <laughs> I'm so much cooler on my own podcast now. <laughs> no, but uh, but Sean was great, and he really yeah. was just like me, and just came with like you guys know how it is. You're starting out, you have no idea, but then mm -hmm. like oh. sometimes you get people, and you kind of feel like you're bombing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Once in a while, you get somebody who comes on, and they're just a talker, and you're just like, tell you're me about this, perfect. and they're like. Boom, like clip it. You're yeah. Right. Clip it. <laughs> so, clip it. So that was Sean and the, yeah. Clip this shit, man. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> did, did you have a game plan when you first did your first podcast? Because I know when we did our first podcast, we sat down and we kind of just, we thought we could just spitball it. We knew like what, like where we wanted the conversation to go a little bit. Yeah. But really we were like, oh, I'm just going to sit down and talk to all these dope people, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And like, there was no true like. Format. 
Like we wanted it to be like conversation style, mm -hmm. but still needs to be like some sort of structure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that when I, when you first start, you're using other people that you've heard as sort of like the scaffolding for it. Yeah. So if you hear my early episodes, there's a lot of like Debbie Mil uh, Debbie Millman, who I mentioned, sort of like that cool, like relaxed, calm thing. And then I would like randomly start doing like my Joe Rogan imitation sort of. And it's just, it took me a while to kind of find my own voice, yeah. but um, I didn't really have a plan. But as time progressed, and I think that the, the DMs started coming in and people mm -hmm. were like, hey, you know, I just got fired. I'm coming home on the train, you know, back from the city. Like your podcast is really like, you know, doing yeah. something for me right now. Then I realized it's like, hey, dude, this is not some sort of exploration and like how major I can do it, but really like what I could give yeah. back. So I really genuinely, that's something that's, once I knew that that happened or like we would do open mics and people would start like crying and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause or they would just get nervous and I felt it. Um, and then COVID kind of came along and sort of pushed that back a little bit. So I'm yeah. excited now to sort of get more like, you know, get into it more people get more eye contact and sort of be be there and help people on their journey because it is an overwhelming thing but what are some of your tips for people that are first starting a podcast you need to be okay with the fact that for a long time there's going to be essentially like nobody you're going to be talking you're going to put something up and even if it's a crazy guess like you're going to put it up and it's going to get like 23 this is not like a joke number like 23 views 17 views like you'll spend your whole day working on this fire, like TikTok ready, like chopping it up with the lens flares and everything. And <laughs> then it's like, about it. <laughs> yeah, YouTube is like, hey, dude, fuck you. Six views. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially now. I actually kind of got in early, like w long before, not long before, but a good amount before it was saturated. Like I okay. really hit it hard in like 15, 16, yeah. 17, that real like, you know, Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat yeah. type era. I was <laughs> in that shit. And now in COVID, it's just, it's so saturated, but. Um, you got to be okay with the fact that for a long time people won't listen, but just trust the, the fact that eventually those people will tell their friends and stuff like that. But yeah. I, during COVID, I restarted one called Underexposed, and I was like, this is going to be fresh start. All my fans are going to follow me. Like, nah, not at all. And it was like a humbling <laughs> experience. So it takes a while to build the audience. And I think that any time where I've ever tried to make something that was viral or there was just some sort of intent behind it. It never popped. But any time that it was like me having a breakdown, you know what I mean? And yeah. I going like, I hate this. I hate this. People would hit me up be like, yo, it's the realest shit I heard all day. <laughs> Keep it up. Yeah. So just be real. And I think that that is, there's so many people that have a setup like this, but aren't doing what you guys are doing. Like they're being yeah. sort of selfish with it. Yeah. Where, and that's what kind of piqued my curiosity about you guys was like, you guys are, you know, there's a there's a value for the person that's listening. And that's always always key. So a value for this person that's listening, like you're thinking more about your audience than you're thinking about yourself and your own ego. Yeah. And also just know you gotta be patient with it. And the people who make it are patient with it. And on top of that, everyone I've ever interviewed and I've interviewed like like I'm an I'm an idiot. Like I'm a you know, like <laughs> uh, my wife told me not to talk down. <laughs> but compared to the people that I'm interviewing, yeah. I'm like nobody. Yeah. But all those people who ever like made it and, and did it like big there's so much struggle and there's so much time of like being broke paycheck to paycheck. Like we're all doing that. So I know I yeah. feel like people like they just look on their phones nowadays and they don't really like understand that aspect to it that like you really got to be like invested into it. Cause like these people that you see that have these like these huge podcasts, you said like Joe Rogan's like first podcast, right. like they were just, they've been doing it for so long. In front of like a long. webcam, like yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like now where it's at is like, who would have thought, yeah. but yeah, it's like the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, as long as like you're giving giving something to the viewer that they can like for sure resonate with yeah I mean it's like value but what what do you feel like is um like a true key to like the growth of a podcast I think it's I've I've always been perplexed at, at why things grow you, you you think like you're gonna be able to do it like the, yeah like that old Kanye song like up in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on just like that vibe like yeah. you think you can think I'm gonna show them I'm gonna like put my thumb on the scale yeah. and make it work yeah and it's so weird content doesn't work like that it really doesn't like all the times that I thought I'm like doing a major it like flops yeah and then there will be periods where I won't do it for like two weeks and all of a sudden the numbers are popping so I. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I think you really can get sort of like caught up in the analytics of it all. I try not to look at it too much. And um, I think the, the growth takes, I, I don't have like that big of a podcast, but I, I know that there are periods in my life where I would like, I got a time hop or memory on Facebook yeah. 
from like, I got a thousand downloads in a week. And I have like wrote about that on Facebook. Now there are days I get like, you know, and just to show like in context, like I have a big podcast, but there's sometimes it's like a thousand in a day. Yeah. Well, there's people who get a hundred thousand in a day. So it's like, where do you stack yeah. yourself up sort mm -hmm. of thing? Yeah. I feel like comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, exactly. Kind of savage right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. clip, clip that. I clip that. Clip that shit. <laughs> um, so interviewing hundreds of successful entrepreneurs, business owners, creatives, do you find a common denominator between the, the guests? Yeah. I think that a lot of the people that I've interviewed, and, and I'm going to preface this by saying myself included, are on some sort of like creative spectrum. And I know whatever you say the word spectrum, people are like, whoa, like we're <laughs> canceled kind of thing. But really, everyone that I meet is um, who's hyper creative and can just do yeah. their mind draws connections that uh, you, unlike anything you've ever seen, yeah. but you can't like replicate that person. I think there's a level of creative genius there, like a, uh, uh, and that is on a spectrum, I think. And there's levels to it. And I think that some of the most successful people can sometimes be the hardest to kind of like put your thumb on. Mm -hmm. But that's what's up though. Mm -hmm. And I find comfort in that because it's like, here's this person who's wildly successful, is a multimillionaire, has all yeah. like this different stuff. And not that money's everything, but the people that I know are successful are outlandishly themselves. Mm -hmm. Like I have a friend, D Speed, who works at, she runs it over at YouTube Music. She works with like Tuma Vasa, all like this crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. Like she's in the rooms doing the thing and she's the most like unapologetically herself person will just post this like crazy stuff on Instagram and people love it so much. And, yeah. and so many successful people, they have that. They're not afraid. It sounds so lame, but they're not afraid to be themselves. Um, but they also use that that sort of abstract, weird behavior and figure out where that's like applicable in the creative process. A hundred percent. Um, and then for people that are just getting into the space, what was your approach to getting guests and, and getting uh, networking with these high level people? Okay. So everyone thinks that there's going to be some sort of, th I, you could literally DM me, hit me up. I'll send you exactly what I write. You can copy and paste what I write. One of the things that's crazy is that like the, the DM that I send is literally like, Hey, hope all is well. And you're like, Hey, hope all is well in your world. Uh, my name is Rob. I have this podcast. Like, this is what it's about. Here's the link to the podcast. Let me know if you'd be interested. Thanks so much. The, it, by the way, it will be edited in post production and I'll make it sound awesome. Best, Rob. And that's it. And it's so funny because I was trying to convey this to students or people that are just entering the field or just graduating. Like, don't be transactional with it. Just be like, hey, like, this is, you know, they're either going to do it or they're not going to do it. Yeah. They're going to look at your shit and be like, no. Yeah. yeah. I say no all the time. Yeah. Like my my email is just a graveyard of people that message me. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. cause, but I get, but like the, I could tell the intent. You could always yeah. tell the intent. Yeah. And I think that people really, they don't see that. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they think people think that they're slick. You're not slick. Mm -hmm. People know when you're being legit. Yeah. And if I really want somebody, I'm not afraid to be like, yo, like the guy from the Lumineers. Yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, you live in Ramsey. <laughs> I, I, I saw that it was seen. Yeah. 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 yeah, like you got to be a little crazy with it, but um, just be genuine and reach out and all that stuff. So yeah. Um. So after the podcast, when did you get into photography, DJing, and everything like that? The DJ one's crazy. I guess chronologically, we'll start with a DJing one. So when I was in fifth grade, my cousin was best friends with this guy Tom LaRock, and Tom LaRock still DJs to this day, but he's like a big Miami club DJ. And at the time, like Jada Kiss and Britney Spears and like, you know, everybody who was anybody who came to Miami, my cousin would like pick them up at the airport. And he was sort of like, you know, he was with the crew. Like he was one of the boys. Yeah. This thing. Picture like a Fisher type character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that was Tom LaRock. And uh, he got these records, like these vinyl records, like a record pool. And uh, there'd be from, it was, dude, it was so crazy. I was in fifth grade when this happened. In Suffer, New York, by the way, which is like the whitest town ever, <laughs> like my vanilla ass friends. And uh, he would send me, I would get these boxes full of records. But what was crazy was like they were from Rockefeller, directly from Rockefeller Records, directly from Def Jam Records, like singles of like uh, Cameron, Hey Ma. I, would, I got that like months before anybody. I Need a Girl Part 1, I Need a Girl Part 2 yeah. with the instrumentals and everything. So I would get this, but I was in fifth grade. Yeah. Which is like so weird. If you think about it, it's mad young to be yeah. doing that. So I got into it that way and, and really got this deep knowledge of 
hip hop and rap and, and scratching. Uh, and I had, yeah. and then my dad bought me turntables and stuff. It was pretty That's crazy. Cool. And then that fell off for a minute. Then in high school, I was like the John Mayer guitar type character. And then uh, I got I got a PA because that because I wanted to do like gigs and stuff. And then I filled in one day for um, at this bar, and I just the the DJ needed someone to fill in for him. I plugged my iPad in, and um, at the end, the uh, when I got there, the bar the bartender was like, uh, "Do you want like what are you drinking?" I was like, "I have a Coke." They're like that's it? I was like, "Oh." Captain and Cove, like sure, no problem. And they poured me all night. And at the end of the night, I went to go pay my tab, and they were like, "No, nah, DJs drink for free." And I always joke around, but I'm like not joking at all. That's what the moment I became a DJ. <laughs> I, I was guess 20 so. years old at the time. I needed to rock it out, you know, for a couple more months. And then yeah. uh, when I turned 21, and I stuck with that since. And that eventually you get tired of doing bars, and you move into the wedding space. Yeah, I've had some great mentors along the way, like really too many to name, but mm. in particular like John, who I work with, and. That's been really cool. Uh, and then the photography, that was also similar story, like kind of my whole life is a series of like picking things up and then mm -hmm. putting them away for a while and then coming back to it in a big way. And that happened with photography too. I learned it in high school. Then when I went back to college, I got like a Canon Rebel, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that. And like every other guy my age was in the creative space, got super into like Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon and um, <laughs> that whole thing and just learning. And ironically enough, some of the people that I'm now interviewing on the podcast, like I just had Pai Jerza, and mm -hmm. that name probably rings a yeah. bell for you. Yeah. yeah. He was just in the show. So um, I just never intended to, for them to get that big, but I just tried working corporate America. It was a disaster. And I was like, now I'm kind of thriving with the photography and the DJing, which is weird. Mm -hmm. From from DJing bars to weddings, do you see like, yeah. a commonality in, in like crowd reactions? Well, DJing bars is like such a shit show that you know <laughs> like that it really does it's perfect training yeah it's, it's similar to like i'm a big fan of stand-up comedy so you're gonna hear probably multiple references to that today but um it's similar to like open mics well you got to do those open mics and then that will prepare you like you can't mm -hmm. do bigger reasons yeah, stuff like that yeah you gotta get into thrown it. into it yeah exactly yeah, yeah uh and at bars people are just wasted on jaeger bombs and stuff like that <laughs> just, just be like you the, this the meanest thing a girl ever said to me one time and this is what this moment was one of those moments that really made me get my life together she told me that, she said, when you DJ, I feel like I'm at a dare dance. And I thought that was like, do you guys know what a dare dance is? <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty bad. I was like, <laughs> she was like, no, not a dare dance. More like a bar mitzvah. And I was like, oh, oh no, no, man. She was right, though. I think I was playing like Michael Bublé. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're everything. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So uh, fly me to the <laughs> They're doing like Jaeger bombs. I'm trying to be like cool. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dad's sport jacket on. So. <laughs> nah, but it, just like anything else in my life, I really am always relying on like YouTube and, you know. Yeah. I've got a bunch of, I would call them like YouTube heroes who are doing a major. And I try as much as I can to meet them. And, yeah. and that happens. So you're self-taught for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I went to college for, for it, but um, I think that college was great because it like solidifies. It's like, okay, this is, Kind of who I am, and the decision to go to college and become a graphic designer was sort of like haphazard. Like I, did, I was like, oh, I guess I'm. I was good at Photoshop in high school, so I guess we'll do that. There was no real like come to Jesus moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always tell people that too. Like there's there's not always a moment. Like sometimes it's just you at like two o'clock in the morning watching a video. Like I can do that. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, you just kind of stack those like together. Five years later, you're just right. You yeah, know, you're just in the mix of it. Yeah, or like getting fired from a job. I always like anytime anyone ever gets bounced from a job for getting like you know they don't know how to do clipping mass or whatever in mm -hmm. Photoshop, and the creative director is like, who the fuck hired this? Guy? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, and they let you go. Yeah. And yeah. to you, it's like devastating and it's so sad. But uh, you know, you're not going to make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. So that's really my journey. Is like finding things out the hard way and then kind of yeah. teaching myself through YouTube or through college. Just need the experience. Yeah. I mean, that's just life. Just experience. The more you go through it, the better, whatever it is, the better yeah. you'll be suited for the next situation that occurs in that realm. For sure. Like today, we were doing uh, <laughs> with Ben and Mike. Yeah, we were doing like a mock sale stuff. Okay. And we're just trying to like get them acclimated and just trying to get those reps in for them for like yeah. any question. For like We're going to be in Vegas filming. Right. And most times, like, Joe and I are the ones that got the forefront, like, yeah. you know, talking about the business and breaking everything down. And they're going to be kind of left to do it on their own. So we were like, the more you do it, like, yeah. you need to, to like, today's not going to be, like, 
that event isn't going to be like the last time you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like use it as like a stepping stone, but make sure you learn from those mistakes. For sure. Yeah. And and so much of DJing is that like learning from the mistakes because it's, it's, they're mistakes at scale. And I think that's what people don't see about DJing. Like they see, Mm -hmm. I post it on Instagram and I make myself look like freaking Diplo or whatever. But the reality (laughs) is it's like, and, and I know that you know this, you know, if I make a mis- if I pronounce the bride's name wrong, that's a huge thing. So, yeah. And it's crazy for me as somebody who has such ADHD, who has, who is so like, it's great, but it, it's like, it could be either distracted or whatever. Yeah. So to be like a wedding MC, it really is like, you have to focus and do this right and prepare. And, um, I, to be frank, I see a, a lot, like when I talk to kids that are in college or people that DM me, I see a lot of entitlement. I think that people are not willing to sort of do those hard yards or things they think that they are owed something because yeah, they went to college. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of that now. And that's kind of why I was talking about that thing before about when you create content, like just to, you got to be okay with the fact like you're going to do reps and literally no one's going to give a shit for like mm-hmm. five or six years. And that was my experience. And I interviewed all these people like, what's the secret? Yeah. Like, what's, what's the secret? Patience. What's the secret? Patience. It's so understanding that everyone above you did that same thing. Yeah. yeah. Everyone that started out in the early, 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 that was all the way, the like only way to do it, you know? And I got myself like, listen, this, my mouth can get me anywhere. I got myself to the dance. I got myself to like the global design team at the, at the Hershey's chocolate company. I was there. Like they had Milton Hershey's top hat shit. It was crazy. I got myself there, but you know what? I really didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how nice you are. It's business, and at the end of the day, you got to really know what you're doing. Yeah. And it takes a while to be able to be a practitioner or someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people, myself included, didn't want to face that. But, like, what's your advice? It's like, get after it. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, literally, no one gives You got to get your hands dirty. Yeah. Like, and no one's going to lose. This is the craziest one. Like, this is, like, if you take away one thing, no one is going to lose their job for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people will mentor you. People will look out for you. Yeah. But if somebody reports to somebody else and you're a 22 year old and yeah. they're a 37 year old with three kids, like they're going to, you know, yeah. they're not going to jeopardize their own career for you. Yeah. yeah. So you're completely on your own. Yeah. College is bullshit in that way. It's like mm-hmm. this, these training wheels and it's like, oh, like kids won't want to flame each other during portfolio reviews. I'm like, you really should because you're going to get your shit rocked. Yeah, your clients are going to come back to you. Yeah, like, you're going to be sobbing in the yeah. bathroom. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that meme with uh, with Stewie when he just cried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, so you said your mouth kind of got you into the room. Do you have any tips on communicating to get yourself into the room? I think that you need to, when you get there, when you get the opportunity to be take the place of a student. I think that sometimes people get somewhere. Like I, I, for example, I worked at Buzzfeed yeah. and I wanted so badly to just like fit in and like get, get the right thing at lunch and like wear the right clothes that I really wasn't putting myself in the position of like being a student and learning. And um, I think that there's like a humility you have to have yeah. um, similar to if what you guys are doing like photography or whatever, you know, like if you get the opportunity, like, you know, John Mayer is playing at Madison Square Garden, you're the photographer. Like you're not fucking talking to John Mayer. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like I see that. So it's the same thing. Like when you once you get there, know your role and like stay in your lane and they won't even recognize you. Yeah. I actually had this one time. And what's cool about it is like this stuff is kind of a couple years away now and mm-hmm. like shit has changed so much with mm-hmm. COVID. Mm-hmm. I worked at AT and T and I uh there was like this big corporate get together and I was there and all these people were there and I was like I was like hitting the pen and stuff like that. Like yeah. in between <laughs> it was great. I was like twenty four or whatever. And uh, there was this thing, I stuck my hand up at this corporate thing, and I didn't realize, like, they weren't, there was, like, a rhetorical question. And I plugged my podcast in front of it. The next, my boy was out, who, like, got me the job, who got me the the (laughs) table. He was out, and the next day I came into work, like, went all the way into New York City. And then he came in all, like, flustered and was like, what's wrong? I was like, you can't can't work here anymore. Because, like, (laughs) you plugged your podcast and at, like, a all-hands AT&T creative thing. Like, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking. I'm thinking yeah. everyone should tune into my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> thinking I shoot my shot. Yeah, I, I'm still not seeing eye to eye. Yeah. And shit. I did get a couple of followers though because they're like, "This kid's fucking great. <laughs> this kid's got balls." But yeah, 
but you know you get, you get bounced and that was a yeah i could and it was crazy my day rate was like 850 dollars or something like that which is astronomical for that age mm. and i could have just not said anything it was so big there were so many people that worked there <laughs> but i saw in my head like this is a golden opportunity <laughs> <laughs> I said, gary said, yeah. Yeah. I, I was just gonna say it's a gary v move dude i don't think you understand i was like hanging out like not with d-rock but like with with uh Babin and all those kids back then. Like I, I literally knew them. I didn't work mm -hmm. with them, but I knew them. So in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna do what they do at AT and T. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, who the fuck is this kid? Get rid of him. <laughs> this girl Gina, who I worked with, she took me outside after that because I definitely had this look on my face, like my dog just died. And the craziest part was they let me finish out the week there. So I had to like, this is what you're missing out on. And then that week they opened up this like promenade that like overlooked rockefeller center and all this different stuff and everyone's like wow this is so exciting to work here and i literally had to work there for another like three or four days but so she took me down where like rockefeller center is it was like the summertime and she said that uh there was somebody in her family who had said that you never there was like an old like i think like a chinese proverb or something like that like you never show your sword mm -hmm. and i was like what does that mean i feel like there's a that's what she said in there somewhere she's like no like you never show <laughs> You never show like what you're capable of. You can be great and you like, you know, your podcast is great. It is legit. Yeah. But you were like, hey, see, like, look at this thing. And I've, that was a great lesson for me. Cause it's like, yeah, you could be doing great things, but you need to have humility. And you know, if yeah. someone says like, Hey, this thing's cool. Sometimes yeah. the answer is thank you. Mm -hmm. And like, that's it. And I gotta, exactly. I gotta work on that. Yeah. People are like, yo, I love your podcast. I'm like, thanks. You know, we were trying to like, that's not. And you dive into like the the details, right. of, like stuff that like they, you know, what I mean? right? And it's like, like so, less... like they they like we love your podcast. I'm like, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like less is more. Yeah. I always preach that, like hold on to your ammo. Yeah, yeah, because there'll be there's always an opportunity to just yeah have a vomit mouth, but yeah, like more often than not in situations like that, you'll leave it like, uh, should I have you know yeah held back a little compared to like when you don't let it all out mm -hmm. you're never like oh maybe i should have just like let For it all sure. rip if you're just like you know what fuck it like anytime yeah. that that like that's when you got to pause mm -hmm. i'd be like yeah. hold on because i've done that in my life too i really let people have it um i've had a lot of anger issues over the years and through a lot of therapy and you know just kind of working on it and i've learned to kind of calm down but uh the ego is crazy man yeah how, what are some tips for, you sounds like you worked on your ego a lot. What are some mm -hmm. tips on trying to maintain your ego throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month? It's, this is going to sound weird, but I try not to let money be like, the. this sounds like very like bro-y, but I try not to have like money be the thing that motivates me. Mm -hmm. And to pull like from Gary Vee, like we were talking about, how he says like from both sides. I do both. It's like money is not everything and money is everything. And I try and like do that like with my ego, like it's, yeah. a, and it's in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Like I ha I'm like, I'm very insecure about making sure that I could be a provider for my wife and for all this different stuff. But at the same token though, it's like, I cannot let money dictate or let me compromise my own values. Yeah. And somewhere in the middle there is like the truth. Yeah, and I do that with a lot of stuff, yeah. like with my ego, like somebody can be an asshole over here. And then on this side, they can be somebody who, you know, you can overlook their character defects and it can be a, a very good working relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people, especially like boomers and shit, you see all the time with boomers, it's just hard. No, you're yeah. like what, all the way one way. Yeah. I just try and be in the middle. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's like the best way in, like, to, to just grow as an individual. Like, yeah. I feel like when people are just like dead set on one, like, Nope, like this is this is it. Can't see it any other way. Right. You're like, if people show you their true colors, believe yeah, them. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. It's, <laughs> it's just, not always true. Yeah, yeah. It just stops you from like a like meeting amazing people or like having those good conversations or just like growing as an individual professionally. Like, you got to be able to like, you know what I mean. It's like, yeah. you got to be selfish for yourself, but at the same time selfless. And it's like, yeah, that middle ground right there will allow you to like, you know, spend time on yourself. You know beat yourself up at times but then also be like okay yeah like i'm aware of the flaws i might have but i don't define the whole right. entire thing yeah absolutely and and that can be said of other people too i have great relationships with people that i really admire who they do stuff again we talked about that creative spectrum like yeah. you deal with some freaking crazy personalities 
Yeah. Especially it's like in, in the wedding industry, dude, you know, yeah. mates, <laughs> dude, like, oh, but here's the perfect example. Like working in the wedding industry, for example, I, I'm trying to talk about this more because I don't want my story to seem like disjointed. Yeah. It's a big part of my story. Yeah. So I'm constantly working at like legit ass places. Yeah. I got there and I'm like, oh man, I hope I <laughs> fuck up today. This is like, you know, like a yeah. uh, uh, crystal plaza, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But when you get there, my first thing is, it's like, we're talking about egos, right? My A number one thing is go up to the maitre d', the person who's in charge, the person who all week long has, be, has been dealing with a bunch of asshole DJs who are really disrespectful and weren't on time. 100%. The way that I deal with like the ego of that situation is I get there really early, like early enough to be like, what time is this starting? <laughs> like, you know, like, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Like me and my, I'm there. I'm like I'm dressed appropriately. I go up to the major D. I'm like, hey, just so you know, you're in charge today. All right. Like the client, they yeah. seem cool. I'm extending to you an olive branch. You got your thing. This yep. is your freaking living room yeah. thing. But I'm not like subservient. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. hey, I'm a professional. You see, I'm here early. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do a major. I'm yeah. gonna kill it. Like don't be annoying, and I won't yep. be annoying. Yeah. And we'll, and then at the end, but what's so great about that is like at the end of the night, like dapping that guy up and being like, Yo, what's your name? What's your IG? Yeah. Next thing you know, you're like a staff DJ there. So, yeah. but there's so many people who get there and go, this fucking guy, this guy I think he is. Yeah. And they're just like, literally like burning every b bridge in town. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like you got to understand like. No one's the hell. Say for like going yeah. up to the major yeah. and like a lot of them are going to be like, you're going to go up to him and you're going to be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have came up and say hi. Because he right, seems right. like. Of course, of course, he's got a bunch of things going through his head. Of course, he's not like might yeah. not be the most like happiest person in this moment because like the day hasn't right. even yet started. He hasn't seen how things went out, and you're yeah. just a piece to this like gigantic puzzle yeah. of a wedding. But they don't know. That's yeah. the thing. Like if they don't know you, if they don't know you, they don't know you, and you exactly. gotta respect that. Whereas a lot of guys are like, yeah. yo, what's with the attitude, bro? Yeah. The attitude is, is that like last night he dealt with an absolute train wreck. Exactly. And they've done 17 buddies yeah. there this week. Yeah. And like, if he has yeah. one more, he's gonna quit his job and not gonna be able to yeah. make rent. So I always just try and empathize with yeah. whoever I'm working with. It's like a whole. It's a whole event. So like, yeah. At the end of it, like you said, like they're dapping you up. They're like, yeah. oh, dude, like you know, you were amazing. I mean, it's like the same thing. Like for videographers, we're working alongside, yeah. like photographers yes and that in itself is like you gotta introduce yourself you, know, like, you, really, you gotta like game plan with people that aren't even like they don't yeah, even know. you know what i mean like you gotta be like respectful of, like i know you need to get your shots for us it's easier to like kind of chill in the background a little but there are going to be times where we're going to step in and like totally just as long as you know that yeah it, it, it's all good or like this guy just totally gave me ptsd i was working with nick spinelli one time i was <laughs> doing photography just like a one-off thing working yeah. with nick He's mad cool. You guys would love him. Uh, he's trying to get him on the podcast. But it was so <laughs> funny because I was working with them and I, I don't work for like SE or anything. I just like happened to be like trying to get some stuff yeah. from Graham and like mm. a chance to work with Nick. It was so funny because like one of the girls he worked with like grabbed me and was like, yo, like you, you got that guy's shot like nine times. And it was so funny because like back in the day, I would have been so pissed. Yeah. I was like, damn, she's so right. I totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. she was looking out though. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and it happens too. You know what I mean? Like you can go over with both teams before the day like yeah, yeah. all right don't get in my shot i won't get in yours but yeah like, it, it can happen as long as like in time you can be like all right you gotta yeah you gotta yeah. step to the side a little yeah. bit or like when i shoot for so like i'll shoot like a reception for like uh dj obando and in that i'm not like i'm the lowest man on the totem pole but like i need to figure out a way that i can still like produce a video yeah that's gonna make it look like I was the main, you know what I mean, the main person there. So like, the video is crazy because if you don't got it, you don't got it. Yeah. I'm always like, yeah. nah, I'm good on that. I'll be the photographer. I'll freaking yeah. AI generate the dad back. And it's like, <laughs> well, it's like tough sometimes too. Like I went to a wedding where like I'm pulling out equipment that might like the actual videographer looks at me like, fuck, this dude's got like all this shit. Like I'm the guy, and so like right. I always make sure like same way you go up to the major dude. I'm like, just so you guys know, I I'm. I'm just here for the reception. Right. This is still your show. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be over here. And then at the end of the night, I'm like going in for a shot. But then I see like the photographer going in. I'm like, no, no, you go in. She's like, no, you take yeah, this Yeah, that's the best feeling. And I'm not even like, the the couple doesn't even really know me. Yeah. They know me as the guy who's with the DJ. My favorite thing is when was when somebody leaves early and you got your camera. And all of a sudden you're seeing Kodak Moen. So you're like, oh, my God. 
<laughs> and, and, and that's how you get like a good like 200 hundred dollar tip because like you're i'm dj i got i happen to have my camera with me from like whatever yeah and like the photographer did mad early like you know what i'm saying like after cocktail hour type shit <laughs> oh wow and i got my camera and all of a sudden like grandma comes out to the dance so i'm like hold on let me get everyone oh, yeah. dude i love that shit so you're going above and beyond for your clients yeah for sure, for sure. All the stuff I'm talking about today is applicable to to like anything. So it could be my photography, my DJing, all different stuff. I think so much of what it comes down comes down to in my experience is the kind of feeling that I gave them throughout the day. Mm. Yeah. Like, and there's so much like inside baseball stuff, like with cameras, for example. Yeah. Like, you know, R six or the R six Mark II. Oh, where but like literally nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like nobody cares. Yeah. Like there was like a baseline level of like you knowing what you're doing, knowing how to shoot manual. And yeah. then after that, for the most part, the average people they don't really know. Yeah. So like, for does me, it shoot it, in 4K or not? Right. Like they don't even know. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you also kind of don't even like you know like yeah. <laughs> I don't even. There, yeah. yeah. And there's things you can do like in post production. It's crazy like yeah. the noise and all that different stuff yeah. now and the Lightroom stuff is like crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, you don't even got to take the picture. Exactly. <laughs> Type in what you want. Yeah. Like a wedding photo. <laughs> but I think so much of it comes down to those experiences and stuff like that. And, yeah. Um. Not to keep. I think because I'm in Jersey, I keep coming back to this. But you know, uh, with. Nick Spinelli and those people that kind of taught me like every wedding is the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's a good way I think of looking at it. Mm -hmm. It's like every oper every time that you meet with a, a client, it's like, how are you making them feel? And how would you want to, you know, because yeah. I've, I've gotten married before. My DJ called me. He's, he's my boy, by the way. So shout out Nestor. What's up, bro? Love you. <laughs> but he, uh, he called me like, yo, where's, like, where's the reception again? Like, I'm like, just got done walking down the aisle. I'm like, yo, where? So I always try and be early and stuff like that. So yeah. just, how do you make people feel? I'm, I'm I'm only busting his chops, but I try and think about that. Yeah, 100%. Where am I alleviating their anxiety? Yeah. You know what I mean? Me, yeah. what's up? Coming in with a good vibe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like, too, like, these people have so much, like, we're, you know, speaking about weddings. I mean, like, we do a lot of, like, commercial shoots. And, like, even that, like, we could spend time planning and figuring out but like once the camera and lights turns on like you never know what's gonna it, it can really like change a person like drastically like totally. we've seen people like i felt that way when i came in here 25 minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> dead seriously i was like wow i've never actually done this before <laughs> like, we've seen people like just break down in front of our very eyes and totally. it's like in those moments how do you make someone feel that it's not abnormal like how right. they're reacting mm -hmm. to things and like understand like they're they're paying us a lot of money to produce something that like they've seen in their head maybe a couple times right. but like it's up to us to make everyone feel comfortable you know what i mean like once it's it's our day like we're gonna go make sure like whoever's in it we're gonna talk to them let them know like break down because there's nothing worse than like someone that's along in the process of like wait what yeah what are we supposed to do like what am i actually doing right it's like weddings too like there's so much stuff like i would say like a couple like they're dealing with the the photographers, videographers, DJs, the the venue in itself, yeah. Again, yeah, make it making sure that like all their guests are there properly. Like I just did my brother's wedding, and like we're about to, I have to walk my grandmother down the aisle, and like she's like five minutes away, and like everyone's freaking out. Yeah, yeah. kind of just gotta like, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't want to add the stress or like, yeah. you know, same thing with the major dean. Like he might be pissed off from the day before, but like a good like I'm not saying that major dean wasn't a good guy or like doesn't do his job amazingly, but like. To be able to like that was yesterday. Yeah, this person had nothing to do with that situation. Right. Thus, I I can't bring it's hard that. Though when you go it off, is, like Thursday, Friday, it is Saturday. tough. But that Sunday went. Oh, that Thursday you got fucked. Friday got fucked. That's, Saturday you're like, yo, if this yeah. says anything. I'm not <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want things to make. Right, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's really at the end of the day about empathizing and understanding where other people are coming from. Yeah, because I, that, you try to alleviate as much stress as you can, and I feel like that's really. The job of the vendor, right? To make everything go as smoothly as possible. Yeah. yeah, and I think that a lot of times I just do things because it's like business instinct. It's like grab that door, do that thing, do that. But but it's really cool at the end of the night when like there's a moment of like real genuine emotion or or something went awry that day. I've had you know you yeah. name it. I've had it. I don't want to put anybody on blast, but I've had some pretty insane. Even this summer, just like crazy, you know, yeah. things do go wrong in, in yep. these situations. And um, there have been times where I've gotten in the car and been like. I'm not crying right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. Are you personally, do you have your own personal DJ brand? Or are you DJing through a bunch of different studios or how are you working right now? Sure. So I always like to give credit where it's due. Uh, and this is always, again, this is something that's very, you know, in the industry, it's like very important, you know, yeah. relying with what's happening. So uh, I have my own DJ company, Rob Johnston Entertainment, which is just me by myself. And I also work with John Rivera from Action Entertainment. They're in Nyack. 
So that's right mm-hmm. by the Cuomo Bridge, like yeah. the Hudson River, that kind yeah. of deal. We go all over the place. So I work with John and I work with uh, my friend Mike at Nonstop Entertainment. And I work with uh, my friend Rob Townsley at Dream Wedding Entertainment and all these these different ones. And I'm sure I'm you know forgetting things along the way here, but I work with a bunch of different people. And then on the photography side, I'll work with like Craig Scott Entertainment for doing like live band stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, all these men and women really have made a huge impact on my life. And, um, it's funny, like when you're younger, you're kind of like eager to like leave the nest. And then there were, there were moments where I'd be like trying to like leave the nest. And then I would go work for other people and be like, oh no, I'm like, this guy's like my DJ dad. Like we're we got to chill here and just do this. Not that like, you just think like I should be doing more, but then you realize it's like, no, no, no. Like let's strengthen the team, get it together, go hang out, like make these social experiences where we all hang out yeah. to get really tight knit. And then every weekend feels like a party and the relationships, they've always been great. But I think right now, um, again, like egos can be part of that, right? Like how are things, con- I, I deal with that shit all the time. And honestly, it's becoming sort of like a pet peeve of mine. But again, I empathize. It's like that you as the talent, you putting on your Instagram story, who gets the credit? Are you ma- are you trying to make it look like you're doing this on your own because you didn't tag yeah. this thing? That's a big thing. Happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. And again, I try not. I try and be patient with it. But um, yeah, yes, yeah, tricky. Yeah. We we work through like a lot of different really either marketing <laughs> agent, yeah, marketing <laughs> agencies or DJs, and we always. I never try to make it look like oh, MediaX marketing is doing it all. I always try to give credit where yeah. credits do. What the weirdest one for me is giving credit and then still like no, take it down. That to me is like that's crazy. Yeah, that's like, like dude, we were there together. Or, like you over the, there's. There was yeah. 250 other people there who saw this. You know that, right? Like yeah. that's what's yeah. weird for me. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna stop before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, you're coming back around with the podcast? Yeah. So I did a whole bunch of switching gears out of the wedding industry because I know it's kind of it's like, sort of like inside baseball. But uh, <laughs> uh, but there's def- there's somebody out there right now who's DJ who's like that's fucking right. I hate that. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm back at it with the podcast now. I I wouldn't call it like a new season because it always feels weird. But I guess this would be like season seven type vibes. You know, like, yeah. something new. The last few years, I think that I've really focused. The last like two years in particular, I really have focused on quality over quantity. For the longest, I interviewed so many people, and I just wish I would have just like slowed down. I was just trying to ride that momentum. And yeah. I think that's great advice for creatives in general is like slow down and like yeah. make the product better. Stop stop trying to like hustle and like be on that. Like you know, check it out. Like look how much content we're producing. Yeah. But the content kind of sucks. Yeah. I did that for a while. And now I'm trying to do like more like I had Aaron I. Butler who was the uh, one of the main editors for Euphoria, which was really crazy. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. And he talked about working like with Labyrinth and shit on my mm-hmm. podcast. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so then Zendaya came in the room. Yeah. And I was like, that's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Holland was yeah, on set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was on set that day. He is actually really good looking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I had that. And then I did a whole bunch of stuff um, with The Handmaid's Tale, which was really kind of crazy. I got like kind of looped in with the ha- with the people in The Handmaid's. Do you guys watch that show, by the way? I I've it. heard. I've yeah, my girl got me onto it. It's it's been. Wild. Yeah. So I did. Um, I did a couple of episodes with that. So I was kind of in the film space and I almost got, I, um, I'm this close. I think I could do it. I think that we're talking about empathy. Mm-hmm. I think there's a little bit of empathy coming from Judd Apatow's team. Cause I made an, I am okay. little pro hack. I want to give out some, I want to make sure I leave here with some pragmatic advice for people yeah. go on IMDB pro. It's like, whatever, like 10 bucks a month, something like that. It's like everything else. It's like 10 bucks a month or something. You go on IMDB pro. Then you can go look up people like you could look up their agents mm. and it's legit like dude it's imdb pro like it's their like verified page or whatever yeah and i found judd apatow's team and i reached out to them and i was like it was i was on there it was like this close so that's what i want to do i want to yeah. start seeing like what's the next like you know i had jeremiah from the lumineers that was like cra- yeah. that was crazy i had um people from the lighting sooner ruthier who did lighting for coldplay and the weekend and what what's so weird about interviewing these people is that they're so like normal. Mm. Yeah. You're like, this girl did the wristbands for Coldplay. Like, put your hands up in the air. And it's like hundreds of thousands of people. Mm. She did that. And then she kind of just like matter of factly explained it on the podcast. I was like, oh yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's just like a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's weird. It's yeah. like, you know, you meet these people or like the guy from the Lumineers, he's like, Hey man, what's up? 
<laughs> and then I went home and went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did like he did AA too. I was like, wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we're, we have similar experiences. We're yeah. the same like boring town. So, uh, but no, I'm looking forward to doing. The point of all this is to say that yeah. I'm looking to see sort of like what the next level of that is, though, too, while not losing sight of the fact that I want to be helpful for people just starting out and also shine a light on people who people may not know as much. Yeah. Um, but I got a really, really, really like this is for people that do, I got a, I get emailed like every day about people, potential people going on the podcast. I got a really 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 want to fucking interview at this point yeah. yeah if you see somebody on my podcast i either want something from them <laughs> or i want to be best friends with them or they're like a fucking personal hero of mine yeah the days of like this is so and so the executive creative director from such and such studios like fuck i don't yeah. care about that at all yeah. yeah i want people to be like whoa we got the fucking cold play girl let's go yeah. Clay. Yeah. you know like yeah so yeah and only getting your interest into talking with that person anyways and it could tell on, on camera on the audio you know and it does so many interviews of me just like oh cool that's so interesting. anyway <laughs> so you dj huh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> whereas now it's cool like you get me in the room and that's what's sick it's like i try and think of it as you were talking about i think before we were on i wasn't sure if it was on or off camera but we were talking about like finding the tone like finding out how to do it yeah i always think of it like a super bowl party like I'm sitting down at like a Super Bowl party. I don't know anybody there. I'm like, fuck, that's gonna be a long day. And someone sits down next to me, like, oh, like cool. Like, what do you do for work? And they're like, oh, I'm actually like an editor for Euphoria. I'd be like, what? And I would just like <laughs> yeah. ask them a million questions. Yeah. yeah. I'd have I I would never in a million fucking years have any problems thinking of the next thing to say. We could yeah. sit there for four hours. I'd be like, cool. What's Chris Martin from? <laughs> like, <you're> like, <laughs> you know. So th then it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, That's my advice for people, by the way, about the the podcast, about get, guests and stuff. Get someone you really give a fuck about because if you yeah. don't, you're going to be out there in no man's land with you and somebody from Saatchi and Saatchi. Yeah. Nothing to come with. It's just going to feel like... Uh... <laughs> And then, oh, it, and then it really shows your true authentic, like bring it full circle. Then it really shows your true authentic self yeah. producing quality content. Yeah. It kind of just. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being selective. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Interviewing people that you want to interview. You know yeah. what I mean? At the end of the day, it's like you're, you're pushing out the message or whatever it is that you want to. So like, yeah, if you're going to have someone on that. Like you're genuinely not, it doesn't mean like what they're doing isn't maybe cool or to some people, but if after time you're like, yeah, no, I think I want to go more into this route it's like yeah yeah anyone hating on that's just yeah a hater yeah Fucking for sure haters, haters and losers by the way I, I could we just like talk about haters for yeah. a second yes yeah, let's, let's, let's do it benny it's like yeah <laughs> i'm a yeah. hater okay, all the compassion we're like let's I got do a, it i got a friend so i'm I'm like a i'm a volunteer fireman mm -hmm. and uh i i'm not really that active but I, i've got friends in the firehouse and there's some guys in my firehouse i'm like don't get me wrong i'm boys with them it's cool like it's all good vibes yeah. but they're like haters they do hating for like a living and oh. but but in my mind it's like bro what is your like mental deficiency yeah. i don't care mm -hmm. i'm not losing any sleep about what it is that you're saying yeah. i ne like i everybody i know in my life who's a hater is either like a fucking loser and a piece of shit or like they're hurt yeah mm -hmm. it's yeah. like sad at the end of yeah the it's end. like sad yeah i feel yeah. like most times it's like pushing yeah hey like dude, you own... should go do mushrooms yeah. and ayahuasca and find yeah. yourself and have a good it's like pushing like their own this is getting weird yeah. you're like in your 30s now this has gone on for far too long <laughs> yeah. it needs yeah. to end this is just strange it's like pushing their own insecurities you're having kids world, too like and you can't be about. like bullying other adults while you have a kid but yeah. maybe you could i don't know it's just weird that people have that much hate in their body you know what i mean i think it's just insecurity though it's it's all it is just bad data yeah it's like a false intent it's so like you don't have it, you know, like a lot of people out there today are just wake up, go to work, go home. And it's like th their minds aren't like focused on maybe like the growth of something or like, you know, working alongside like a, t a positive team of people. Like things just might feel like a dead end ish. Right. To where it's like, what else am I to do except take that energy of what I wish I maybe could be doing and like bring down the people that are actually doing it. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think Fuck. that. I, I'm always it's always weird it's always weird when I'm, when I'm a white guy on a podcast like this and people see it they're like oh here he is this like Dave Portnoy Gary V Taylor another, <laughs> another white guy with a podcast but yeah. I will say though Gary has this thing and I, I have friends that work on his team and stuff like that so shout out Gary V and all that um, and he has this thing where and some of it when I look at his content I'm like alright alright Gary <laughs> but right. before the most before, <laughs> but he has this thing about how positivity is really quiet and negativity is really loud 
and that's like that's the realest shit ever yeah because yeah. mm-hmm. people that are going and enjoying their day and lighting candles and had a nice relaxing day at the paramus mall and went and bought a yeah. candle and went home and just you know like they're not uh, they're not in the youtube comment section yeah. like hey calm down like they're not doing that like losers are doing that yeah you know what i mean but people have this view this world view of like oh the country's so divided and they're watching like the news all the time and shit yeah like there's a lot of really positive happy people who stay in their lane you just don't hear from them because 100 percent. they're they're minding their own business yeah yeah my, my mom is by nature not minding your own yeah. business you know what Sh- I mean? Shout out to my mom on this one, but like she always <laughs> shout, was, out. <laughs> mom, shout out all the moms and shout out Anne Grace. Shout out mom. Um there was like a situation in time where like someone was like we were on vacation, someone was like fixing something at the house, and it was like a late like Sunday night. And I'm just like, oh fuck that. Like what who gives a shit about the outlet being out right now? Like I know we paid for this house, but like there's a thousand of them here. Like people upstairs just like voicing their complaints and like <laughs> and like my mom, like my family my mom <laughs> my mom and i are down there like talking to him like in a normal little bit like please like help you like it's a sunday night like go upstairs fix yourself a plate do whatever i'm like mom I'm like why the fuck does this suck right now i'm like i feel like i'm being you know what i mean like what is this she's just like it's not easy being a nice person like it's not easy looking yeah at you know being compassionate and empathetic and like looking at the positive side of things it's easy to shit on people yeah like it's easy to not give a fuck to turn your shoulder like a lot of people are like yeah i know i feel bad about this but maybe if i don't act like i even know what's going on yeah no one's even gonna look at me as the bad guy for sure but it's like if you acknowledge a situation and you still turn your shoulder to it or you're still like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's people out there to where I'm like, so to some people like saying hi is like the highlight of their day. A lot of people don't talk to people, you know what I mean? Totally. Like keep themselves. And it's like, uh, yeah. ha- hating is so easy. Yeah. Like, so we can all go on our phones right now and like give our opinion onto everything and yeah. create an argument and thread on Instagram. Yeah. And just let it just rip. But what time do you guys want to go to? By the way, just so I know. Oh, we can. I was gonna say we, we can start dipping in a rapid fire. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Segment on our show. I'm not sure if you saw where we spit fire your uh, rapid fire questions at you. Yeah. Cool. Whatever comes to your head first. Like short questions, short answer type this. deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do this forever. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, dream podcast guest. Dream. John Mayer. I love John Mayer, and I know you guys don't fucking look at me sideways. I love. I'll John literally. Mayer. Stra- I love John I'll strap Mayer. you to a chair. Yeah. I was just at SF. Tell him. Really? With the Dead and Co. I saw oh, wow. Last, I saw the last show. But I'm specific. Like, Dead and oh, Co. is cool, but I'm talking like. Yeah. Oh, man. that's my only content. Born and raised. <laughs> yeah, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Lie. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. I've seen it with the Dead, too. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the first podcast that you watched? First podcast I ever watched? Yeah, it was with. Uh, Again, like labeling myself in like the douchey white bro category, Fuck but it was yeah. pre Spotify. Joe Rogan. It was. Uh, I remember like they were, they were in like this like room with all these like these Christmas trees. And then at the time it was so fringe, dude. My friends in college, like shit's different now. My friends in college thought I was a fucking idiot. They're like, you're watching the Fear Factor guy, like all day. <laughs> three hours. Are you kidding me? It's gonna be yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah, thing yeah. ever. The jokes on them. Yeah, jokes on them. The biggest, like, yeah. <laughs> Well, so it was really weird. So I was like super early on that thing, and I just kind of saw it for what it for what it is. And um, I still love Joe. I I think that he's uh, he's got kind of like a big ego and could be a real like idiot when it comes to like some of like the political stuff. But um, but yeah, the, the, uh, those early episodes of like Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz and all that different yeah. stuff. I love all that. And and uh, Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast. I got my Burr. feminist wife onto listening to uh, Bill Burr, which is amazing. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. That's how funny he yeah. is. That like she's a feminist, but yeah. he's that funny. Once like, you once uh, you learn about his personal life, you're even like, oh, I love yeah. this guy even more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun fact, actually, this is gonna blow your mind. So all you guys are Bill Burr fans. So I actually did the artwork for the Thursday. So you know how we, if you listen to the podcast, there's the Monday morning podcast, and then there's the Thursday one. And he goes, "Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast." So he had all these different names. And it's someone from like the branding, like copywriting space. It was driving me fucking insane. So I literally took the existing podcast artwork and then reset the type and then made it the, hey, it's Bill Burr, uh, the Monday morning, just and in the parentheses, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. So what's crazy is that every Thursday that podcast comes out, they use my album artwork that I use. Yeah. And I have, a, I have two signed Bill Burr posters in my house. So, but I, I did the, I didn't take the picture, but I did the out the artwork for Bill Burr's podcast, oh, which high. is fucking. That's so insane. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's sick. 
that doesn't feel real. But there's this like mad. There's a thing of him holding up this newspaper. It says, "Does anybody hear, remember laughter?" Or whatever <laughs> from Madison Square Garden, and then it's like sign on the bottom and in a frame. Oh, that's sick. That's pretty that's sick. sick. People are like, "Yo, where'd you get that Bill Burr poster for?" I'm like, "Sit down." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Buckle. Up. Sorry, okay, speed round. My bad. You're good, dude. Uh, you have a underrated album. Underrated album. We could talk music for like the rest of the time. <laughs> All right, let's do it. You guys are like, he has to leave. Okay. Uh, <laughs> underrated album. Yes, yeah, so many. I don't even know where to begin. I've talked about them a lot today, but I think that the, uh, the Lumineers' Cleopatra is a real like coming of age album, and it's very raw and real. And then seeing them do that still strip down at the garden mm -hmm. and having that bass just be like, Bow. like they're one of those bands. Like you got to see it live, but the Lumineers' Cleopatra is a great album. Um, oh, Oh my God, this is, I'm so happy. If you remember anything, if I die tomorrow, remember this. Elvis Blue Hawaii. Dude, I know it sounds so crazy. You guys are like, he was cool to that fucking blue. <laughs> yeah, I got, so I got the vinyl love it. It's in blue. It's Elvis oh. Blue Hawaii. Hmm. It's like the height of Elvis's music. And I know, like, you're like, Elvis, bro? Come on, really? I listened to Elvis before. So you know this song. Okay, so I'll explain. I'll, I'll state my case for Blue Hawaii. So you know that song, uh, Wise Men. Uh, yep. well, that's like the fourth best song on that album. Oh, I man. shit you not. Yeah. And the movie is crazy. It's a little misogynistic and weird in parts, but like the girls in the movie are such dime pieces, all of them. <laughs> and then yeah, and it's all these songs about Hawaii, and he used local musicians, and like the movie's so old school, and just sonically, it just sounds yeah. really good. Damn. Like if you're doing mushrooms, like Elvis <laughs> in Hawaii. Oh, just speak it. <laughs> Pat, let us know. <laughs> I'll get on it. All of a sudden, like the, the tremolo voice shaking will make total sense. You'll be like, fuck yeah. El your boys are going to be like, yeah, okay, Elvis. <laughs> uh, biggest wedding DJ inspiration? Oh, man. I have a whole bunch of friends who are going to be mad for not saying them. Uh, I'd probably say Nick Spinelli. I think that he's the person that, you know, he's he's we're roughly about the same age. He's a little bit older than me. And, um, getting to interview him is really cool and just learning that he's normal and but uh he is just so tenacious with it and just so like never satisfied what's that tiktok sound never stop never what never stop never quit that's <laughs> nick you know what i mean like he and just seeing somebody go all in and be able to accomplish so much and to get to garner the kind of views that he has as as predominantly just being like a uh, jersey wedding dj yeah. that made me look at myself like Bitch, what are you doing? Like you're not doing, <laughs> you're not doing anything. So Nick's great, and um, you know the guys I work for obviously have really taught me a lot and stuff like that. And um, in terms of like also, as you say, local DJs, I just like any. I love Diplo, love Fisher, I love that kind of. Um, I'm I'm always like, I think it's so cool to see like what appeals to the masses. Yeah, and one of the appeals to the masses, and it's good. Like what makes that good? I feel that way about like. Like there's a musicality to Diplo's sets that are really yeah. cool, they're random. I totally vibe out with that. Mm -hmm. And Fisher, I think, is just really, you know, and, and all those other guys of, of yeah. that crew are pretty sick. But um, I'm all, I'm that yeah. I, I honestly I'm very very new to like the house music scene. It's only because I started fucking with guys like mm -hmm. who were in the New, new Jersey, yeah. like yeah. So now I'm into the house shit. I caught the bug. Um, I'm over there like fist pumping. Uh, a song to play at a wedding that will. Any crowd it is, it's gonna get them up and dancing. Oh, here we go. I get. I actually get this question all the time. Like even not on the podcast. Uh, September Earth, Wind, and Fire, Uptown Funk, Celebration. Mm. Um, let's see what else. Shout. Do, yeah, shout. Run, <laughs> run around. Shout. shout actually. You know what's so funny? Like shout. It's gotta be at the end. And you know, gotta be drunk. Like, yeah, you gotta be wasted. <laughs> you gotta be fucked. But like those are songs. Like the ones I just need. Yeah. Those are ones that like you could put on like right in the very beginning. The only that. Yeah. Like if I put on. And, you, and you're looking at me like really i'm gonna be like fuck you uh favorite comedian oh this is hard <laughs> i love comedy now, now we're gonna talk about comedy <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can i be honest right now i think it actually might be shane gillis i just watched shane gillis's shane new uh, special uh, Very I, good. Do, I watched a lot of kill tony lately yeah, dude i'm so uh, i'm totally like on I I've I've known Tony Hinchcliffe since like I said like back like 2015 like yeah, yeah, yeah. he was in that crew, dude. If if you're not watching Kill Tony, it's amazing. It's it's the, it's it's the most unique stand up show that there is. Yeah, like you can you will either it's it's crazy because like 
you know, one of the guys. It's like, like a rose for people that don't know. Yeah, like one. Of, yeah, like the show is basically like Tony will always bring on like a couple of his like famous comedic friends. Right. Um, Red Man, who's always like his shot, right right hand. Shot. Man. Yeah, but yeah, like, he could leave. I wouldn't even care. Like they, <laughs> basically, like they just kind of set up shop on stage. They got a band in the back, and people will sign up to do stand up. You can either know what the fuck you're doing, right. or have no idea. And sometimes I, they're like meth heads. They're like yeah. <laughs> oh, people you see no, on TikTok. You thought were awesome. No, one awesome guy, awesome. one guy was bad. Like oh he was God. like tipping over. But yeah, yeah, it just gives like comics like an opportunity to like get the chance. But like. There's like regulars that like went on the show once and yeah, again yeah. and again. And now they have their this own tours. Skin. This is Hans. Y'all, I'm telling you, son. <laughs> that was just I got my ear to the fucking ground. Hans, oh, Hans, 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 don't let the watermelon shirt shirt shirt. Yeah. Know what's going on? Hanskin's <laughs> got my favorite delivery, but <laughs> yeah. so you got any more uh, rapping? Uh, what's one piece of advice you give your younger self? Ooh, ooh. Uh, lay off the booze and stay in your lane. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> piece of advice, just. Know that it's going to take a long time. And I bet you everyone that hears that's like, but that's what it is. Yeah. It just takes a long time. takes a lot of, it's going to take longer than you want it to, but that's how life works. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I think you just got to be patient. And, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, what's so funny about advice is that, uh, and this is like very late in the podcast to be doing this, but <laughs> it's ridiculous as somebody who has, if you're, if you're still listening, then you, we know you're an OG. You know, like, Thank Chris. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm always trying to like thin the herd out yeah, the yeah. deeper I go. We can actually directly talk to Ann Grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from here on. Yeah. So, so um, as somebody who has a podcast about advice, advice kind of sucks, and most people don't act on it. I literally go into yeah. fucking colleges. I went to like Art Center College, California, and was like, I showed them all the Coldplay people, all the all the different stuff, right? Yeah. Crazy shit. And I'm like. Any anybody in this room can message me directly. Here's my Instagram. Here's my email. Here's everything. I'll put it on the board. Yeah. I'm gonna prove to you guys, like the human ego, like I guarantee fucking to you, none of you reach out to me. I will literally, if it's like you want to work at like Collins in the city, like a big design studio, I will introduce you to Brian Collins. I will facilitate the relationship and ensure that he responds. And people don't do it. That's crazy. Yeah. And I give out advice all the time, and people don't do it. Hmm. Yeah. Just being somebody who takes advice. Yeah. Is such a huge benefit. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, think about how many times like, with your parents, they're like, "Oh, sorry," yeah. and you're like, "Yeah, but like we've had this conversation before, and you keep fucking up." And, like, <laughs> like you know, yeah. I'm out of patience, and now we got to draw boundaries and make shit weird. Yeah, they don't take that advice. Yeah. So I just know. being humble enough to take advice, I think, is is really good. Mm -hmm. That being said, most people don't listen to advice. Myself, <laughs> like people gave me the like you know like the keys like the um, DJ Cal like the keys. People gave me the keys that. I, you know, like in 2014, I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I just couldn't hear it. So be willing to, to you know, receive advice. I don't know if that was your question. No, that was perfect. That was, yeah, that was great. Perfect. Cool. This, this, we're going to dive right back into the same category. A piece of advice you'd give your older self. To don't fall into the notion that you can't keep doing it. Because I know so many people that are older than me, that are much older than me, Brian, Col I consider Brian Collins, who's this like world-renowned designer. He worked like with Steve Jobs and stuff like that. He's like one of the, my best friends, and he is in his somewhere in his sixties. I'm not exactly sure where, nor am I going to say that on the podcast. But yeah. but he's uh, but he's fucking crushing it, crushing it with Spotify and all these big like he's out there like the Kanye song. He's doing it, doing a major. So I think that I always want to keep bear in mind. It's like, hey, you're never too old. Like you're never too old to go into New York City. Yeah, I always stay close. I, this is gonna sound weird. And this is real Jersey fuckboy type shit. <laughs> but I always stay close to New York City. The day I'm fucking too cool to go into New York City, I'm soft and I'm done. That's my advice, to my older self. Keep going to New York City and keep your ear to the ground and like Boom. stick with the culture don't and like don't that advice. Yeah, don't let <laughs> shit pass you. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, there's also so many opportunities. This is a super random thought I had, but I want to make sure I get this in there. If you go into New York City, it also makes you realize like you'll be like this guy in my inbox i'm over babe i'm over analyzing it i'm doing all this different stuff da, 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 like what are the, the, the industry doesn't care da, da. and then you go into new york city and i think this is why it's so key for me and people like casey neistat who's also another adhd on the creative spectrum yeah. full circle yeah like going into the city makes me realize like damn millions millions and millions and millions of opportunities here like don't fuck who gives a fuck what yeah. you know this person said or or like you know this client didn't work out like, look at those buildings. Stand at the bottom of, like, One World Trade Center yeah. and look up. Yeah. And think about how many fucking people work in that one building, let alone in New York City. And I think that that life, that lesson could be applied to anywhere in life. Like, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like, there's so many opportunities out there. Don't get complacent and put yourself in a box. Like people that work with people they don't like, like I don't know what the fuck you're doing because there's just so many people out there, you know? Where can the people find out more about you? Yes. Okay. So it's, uh, thank you guys for having me first and foremost. No, oh, no doubt. This. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, thank you to my friend over here. No, I'm sure. <laughs> um, my socials are meet the creatives. That's meet the creatives with an S at the end. Uh, dot org. I couldn't get dot com. Dot org is weird because it's only me. I just, I like <laughs> confusing people. So meet the creatives dot org. And then my Instagram is underscore Rob Johnston. That's R O B J O H N S T O N. And that gets sort of confusing. Yep. It's just Johnson, but with a T in it. Right. So underscore Rob Johnson, meet the creatives.org. Um, and on my Instagram, all of like my DJ stuff is there and uh, my photography stuff is there. It's just a hodgepodge of stuff. But uh, I really do genuinely on some real shit. I appreciate you guys having me on this. Man, no, no, man. Yeah. 100%. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, this has been this awesome, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Honestly. Get that, awesome. get that machete out and chop this. Yeah. 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 And if you want to leave us off to a quote to this camera. This is from Cy Wakeman, who was a woman who I met on the podcast, and she's awesome. Don't be transactional so that you can become transformational. And I think that I've been all over the place today, but that's one thing that I would try and leave people with. If you go to someone and you say, like, hey, I want a job, that's like going and asking someone to like be like in a relationship. They don't really know you. But don't, that's being transactional. But don't be transactional so that you can become transformational. In other words, you reach out to somebody, you have humility, and you say, hey, like, this is my goal to one day do this. I admire you and I look up, I look up to you, but like, here's where I'm at. How can I get to that place? Yeah. You're not being transactional. The second that you go in for the kiss, so to speak, it's like you just turn back into a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So don't be transactional so you can, that you can become transformational. It will open up doors and it, the results will be more unexpected than you anticipated, mm -hmm. you won't be able to predict what happens, but you'll be much further on down the line. If you want to be transactional, like you reach out to someone, hey, I want to get a job here. Sorry, we're not hiring. Fuck that guy. You do that, yep. you're going to be right where you are. Mm. But you do that and you have humility and you're just willing to just remove your ego from it and not be transactional, you're going to be killed knife. 100%. I would stutter the last word of that somewhat decent. <laughs> rant. All good. Yeah. Rob Johnson, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. That was awesome.